of Liz Truss's article in the Sunday Telegraph was the former London MEP, uh, Lance Foreman. Uh, good morning, Lance. Thank you very much uh, for joining me. Um, so tell me, why were you in support of her statement? What did you like about uh, her explanation of events? Well, I thought it was really important that um, she made the statement because uh, she had to set the record straight. Otherwise, anyone that wants to put through uh, free market, low tax policies uh, would not be able to do that in future because people would just be laughing at uh, what had happened. So it was really important for her to set the record straight. Her budget was loved by business people. The CBI praised it. The Institute of Directors praised it. The IBM, which is a, a family business network, praised it. Um, the, the Daily Mail put on their front page, at last, a real Tory budget. But, um, you know, the, the, the fact is that she was stitched up like a kipper by those in the establishment, by, I think, many in her own party that didn't really actually understand what was truly going on, particularly, as you said, with the LDIs. And I think the person that needs to be hauled up in front of uh, a lot of serious questioning is the, uh, the Bank of England and, indeed, the pensions regulator. This, I mean, look, these LDIs, it might be quite complicated for um, economic idiots like me to understand, and um, possibly you, Lance, I don't know how, <laughs> how much you understand the LDIs and how the leveraging caused her such problems with the market, but she should have known. It's all very well for us to not know, but surely she should have had somebody to say, look, this is going to be an unexpected or pra practically an expected consequence of this policy. How can she not know that? Well, well, if you want me to explain LDIs, I can do it. It's not that complicated. <laughs> but it, it's you know, essentially pension funds were not able to invest in risky equities. And so yeah. they had to invest in bonds and government bonds. And over the last 10 years, interest rates have been so low that the, the return on those pension funds was very, very low. So they were worried that they wouldn't have enough cash to pay out pensioners when they retire. So what happened was these new, um, this new thing called LDIs was introduced, where essentially pension funds could borrow more money on the collateral of the gilts and bonds that they had. And what did they do with that money they borrowed? They invested in more bonds and gilts. And then they borrowed more on the back of that. It was basically a giant Ponzi scheme. Britain now has £1.6 trillion invested in these risky LDIs. That's you know, that's more than half of all the LDIs on the planet. It's two thirds of our national debt. And indeed, this is really interesting. The Bank of England's own pension fund for its own team is worth five billion pounds. Eighty percent of that is in these LDIs. You know, there's a you know, there's a huge conflict going on, and I mm. I just wonder whether that is the reason why interest rates have been too low for too long. The Bank of England have one job, and that is to control inflation. They allowed inflation to get to ten percent. They failed miserably. And the mm. big question I think is, were they responsible because they were worried about these over-risky uh, LDIs? And that's why interest rates never went up fast enough. Allies of Rishi Sunak have warned that Liz Truss's uh, delusional view, they're saying, of, of her uh, short-lived premiership could cost the party votes at the ballot box. We're just hearing Olivia explaining why that might happen. Do you see that as a potential consequence of her position now, her very public analysis of what happened? No, I don't. I don't think that's really what she was trying to do. I think it was a, you know, a question of setting the record straight, um, because I think you know people would mock uh, uh, her because they didn't really fully understand what was going on. And I don't also believe that the markets were spooked by her budgets at all. You know, all of her financial measures were trailed the entire summer long during the the, 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 the leadership hustings. She said what she was going to do with taxes. And her energy policy, people then throw that out and say, yes, but the energy com you know, policy was going to cost uh, 30 billion pounds. People, you know, she explained that to the markets two weeks before. There is no way markets could have been spooked by that. What yeah. spooked the markets was the day before the budget, the Bank of England only put up interest rates half a percent to deal with inflation, whereas people like the American Fed had put it up three quarters of a percent three times that year. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the Bank of England had their hands tied because of these LDIs. I think that the Bank of England chief and the pensions regulator need to come in for some serious questioning. You know, £1.6 trillion of pensioners' funds are invested in these risky assets, and that is outrageous. Yeah.
Well, we're going to be talking about pensions and potential uh, tax changes with Liam Halligan about those in, in just a, a little while as well. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, Lance Foreman, for, former MEP, uh, for joining me this morning. Uh, what do you think? Get in touch on Twitter, won't you, at GB News, and also message me, gbviews at gbnews.uk. Now, after the break, the UK's top-selling vape is stripped from shelves over illegal levels of nicotine. I don't know about you, but I think vaping is the most underrated addiction 